I'm sure the majority of you have eaten a cheeseburger at some point in your life. I'm also sure the majority of you were not thinking of bees when you sunk your teeth through layers of bun, patty, and cheese. Well, bees are actually a vital part of the production chain that gets a burger to its mouth. Take the patty for instance. It's made of beef, and beef is from a cow. Cows eat alfalfa and other grasses, and bees pollinate those alfalfa and grasses. You can use the same thinking for the cheese and bun, as they both contain animal products, which point back to animals, which point back to bees. And how about a side of fries? Well, potatoes are also pollinated by bees. This just leaves tomato and lettuce, and that is a sad burger. In fact, it's not a burger anymore, it's just a bland salad. Using similar thinking, the cotton jeans that you are wearing, the leather in your car, and the coffee you had this morning are also heavily reliant on bee pollination. Oftentimes, bees are thought of as a nuisance or pest, sometimes even a homicidal predator out for blood. In reality, they're a mostly docile insect that keeps the planet spinning for humans, as well as most other species of plants and animals. As I previously demonstrated with the hamburger, the meat and dairy industries are helplessly reliant on bees. Also, based on a study done by the Auburn University, pollinators, mainly bees, provide over $500 billion worth of pollination services globally, while honeybees alone provide 15 to 20 billion to farmers in the US. Without bees, the farmers providing livestock feed would have to use other less efficient ways to pollinate their crops. Now that pollination is a far more expensive and time-consuming job, they would have to decrease the amount of feed they produce. Decreased feed means fewer cows, chickens, and pigs, less livestock means less meat, and less meat means the meat still getting produced would be more expensive. This goes for dairy as well. Now, I'm not saying a decline in meat production would be entirely bad. Remember the burger? and how the meat and dairy industries are dependent on agriculture and agriculture is dependent on bees? Well, through the use of monoculture, pesticides, and genetic modifications on crops, as well as the large-scale farming of bees, modern agriculture is actually a catalyst in the destruction of bees. Effectively, we're shooting ourselves in the foot by killing the bees that we so heavily rely on. The bees too, although unknowingly, are shooting themselves in the foot by supporting the industries that are killing them. We can amend this relationship by using methods like cover crops and co-planting to steer the culture of farming in a more natural, biodiverse, and environmentally friendly direction. According to the Food and Agriculture Association, one third of all fruits, vegetables, and nuts are pollinated by, and therefore reliant on, bees. This means that bees are a vital part of keeping a healthy ecosystem. A healthy, diverse ecosystem can function on a higher, more efficient level than a static one in areas like oxygen production, pest control, and overall health. Bees allow plants to reproduce, and a necessity for every ecosystem is a vibrant selection of plants. Plants also photosynthesize, turning carbon dioxide into oxygen, keeping balance in the atmosphere. Bees are responsible for the fertilization of most fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grasses. That's why in California, billions of bees are shipped in during the almond pollination season. Recently though, entire populations of commercial bees have been disappearing, Scientists have coined this colony collapse disorder. It is thought to be caused by environmental stressors and pesticides, which are powerful nerve toxins designed to kill crop pests and parasites. Commercial bees and nectars are also not genetically diverse, which leaves them vulnerable to disease outbreaks. This vulnerability loops back to the incredible importance of biodiversity within species and ecosystems. So what can you do to help? The easiest way would be to create a bee-friendly environment in your own backyard. You can do this by planting trees that create large amounts of usable pollen for the bees. Fruiting trees, as well as plants that flower, work quite well for this. You could also go chemical free in your garden, for your sake and that of the bees. Most people don't know that, with the exception of honeybees, bees are actually solitary in insects that live in underground burrows or small holes in trees. This means that you can buy or create bee condos to support your own colony. You can support local apiaries and farms by buying their products or even through volunteer work and donations. If you end up with a beehive in your house or yard, don't run and grab a bat. Instead, call a professional and they will remove the colony and rehome it. Most importantly though, you can eat more sustainable foods and support bee-friendly corporations. Now, I'm not asking you to live off of grains and seeds. I'm just asking that you think twice before you eat your next burger. Thank you.